Hello, everyone. Welcome out to the Cars, Bars, and Guitars podcast, episode number 51, off of Highway 51. I'm AJ. And I'm Steve. Steve, who are we brought to you today by? Paper cuts by cardboard, the worst way to do it. And at least you didn't do it the way Jackass did it, in between the toes and the fingers. No. Uh, under the thumbnail sure hurts, though. Fuck, that is yeah. the fucking worst. Uh-huh. Uh, well, Steve... Uh, we are only immortal, but for a limited time. I plan to live forever. So far, so good. <laughs> Steve, what are we drinking today? Uh, got a Blue Moon Coffee Blonde, one of the best course product out there. Yep. And I have a Brooklyn Oktoberfest. I got... One six pack of each of these together for ten dollars. And also, Steve, what are we drinking today? Forty Creek Barrel Select Canadian Whiskey. Quite the step up from my usual Black Velvet Eight Year. If you please, I'm going to pour Steve some of this. I've never had this. It came highly recommended, and by highly recommended, I was looking up the best Canadian whiskeys on my phone. And as I'm looking it up, um, the gentleman behind the bar is like, "Hey, we got Blantons." I'm like. Okay, I'm buying that, but I'm looking for Canadian whiskey also for today's uh, episode, which you'll find out why in a second. And I said, I don't really want Crown Royal because I don't mind Crown Royal. But it's not memorable. It's just Crown Royal. It mixes very well of Cherry Pepsi. It does. Oh, and what you're drinking. Hey! Uh, and I was reading, and it said 40 Creek Barrel Select. And, he, and I'm reading it on my phone. He did not see my phone. He goes, hey, have you tried that 40 Creek Barrel Select? It's really good. I'm like, well. It would be real funny if you just show it to him. It's like. One of these. <laughs> I told him, I, sh- I was like, well, that was on my list. So, uh, Steve, let's give this a shot. It's supposed to be really good. It's supposed to be the sweeter, like a mix of sweet and rye, which sounds good, actually. All right. That's a, that's pretty good. It's, it is very sweet. It's butterscotchy. Very, very yeah, very smooth. Yeah. That's especially, um, do you know how much I paid for this? 30. Nineteen dollars. Okay. <laughs> what a what a great time to be an alcoholic. Nope, drunk. Cause alcoholics go to meetings. They do. Uh, I got time for that. Nobody's got fucking time for that. The Brooklyn Oktoberfest actually isn't bad either. How's your um? How's your coffee blonde? Delish. I was gonna say because these are they were so cheap because they were out of date. But a uh, it's beer. It's beer. <laughs> and to borrow a line from you too, th- these are in brown bottles. Oh, thanks, Home Alone. <laughs> and they have not left the store. Uh, so they haven't been sun bleached, even mm-hmm. if they were set out in the sun. How long it had to set out yeah, in the sun to bleach? That's one of the concerns with uh, green bottles and particularly clear glass bottles, like Newcastle. Yeah. It's wonderful until it skunks. Ooh, and then it's really real unpleasant. bad. Uh, I'm what, not even cooking with that one. Well, you remember the Rainier incident? Yeah, uh, it's a can. Go yes. ahead, let light get through that. Well, Emily looked at me funny because I ate some Snickers ice cream bars at work one day that were three years out of date, but. They stayed in the freezer, so they were inside the freezer, inside the wrapper, and the wrapper was inside the box, and the box was closed, and the freezer was closed. So everything was uh-huh. closed, and it's frozen. It can't get freezer burnt if it's n- the seal's um, never been broken, allegedly. Definitely had an <laughs> interesting incident with that the other day to uh, toast up a 12-inch Mexican pizza. Yeah. That was about a year past due, but it's in the freezer. And had a generous sheet of ice on top of it. So hash that out, sh- clean some of the ice off of it. Um, it calls for twelve to fifteen minutes at you know four hundred something degrees. Mm-hmm. Uh, give it thirteen. Let's see what happens. Uh, if it wasn't freezer burnt, it was certainly toaster oven burnt <laughs> by the end of it. You're taking hot pockets to a new level. <laughs> burnt pocket. <laughs> The the have you seen the fake slogans for uh, food? Is it hot pockets? Every bite's a different temperature. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about like the leftover spaghetti earlier. Uh, I um I never watched the bit on hot pockets. Uh, what Jim, Jim Gaffigan? Gaffigan? I've never watched it. Um, uh, is it, it it's, worth? It, it's absolutely worth the once or one hundred times you'll watch it. <laughs> Well, it's kind of like with Kreischer with the machine story. It, uh, it's kind of what you're known for. It's it's hard to it's hard to say. You're you're the food guy. You're the Russian mafia guy. Mm-hmm. It's a good story. Uh, what's it's... next, uh, Sebastian Maniscalco? You're the Seinfeld. It's not Seinfeld guy. Who are you, people? <laughs> I have watched very little of his stuff, but what I've watched of it, it's it's it is interesting to see a non-animated Italian. 
it's very he's very deadpan almost like the, everything I've watched of him he, he could he could get the hands out and start jump jiving and wailing but I just have all the audio rips of all these comedians so like I don't know what most of them look like and if they're not Eliza I don't care Schlesinger uh huh mm hmm or what about uh Natasha uh huh I didn't know until a couple of <laughs> I Dr Fox comedian. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, she was married to Moshe Kasher. Apparently, they know. Un- yeah, did that tour that they did break them apart? No, they got married. Uh, I knew that much. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, did something else happen? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay. Which that 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 and Christina and Tom are the only uh, comedians I know that are like each of the couple is is a comedian. Uh huh. That's got to be. Cha- I don't know. It's got to be challenging, or if it's. Easier, I don't know. Seems like the personalities would kind of clash. I don't like Christina's stand up though that much, to be honest with you. I I haven't listened or watched Motor Inferior yet, but it's a great title. It's a great title. <laughs> this is really good, and I'm going to allegedly mix this with some Pepsi one day. Like it's uh huh. Oh, it, it smells weird though. Hey, did you smell it first? Uh yeah. Have you said that? It's like all right, it's uh the reverse of your hair. Gray. <laughs> it smells better than it tastes. Oh. Or it tastes better than it smells. <laughs> My hair tastes better than it smells. <laughs> oh, it's the reverse. Never mind. God damn it. All right. Steve, it, I have some beer it's news. The, the, the coffee effect. I have a lot of beer news. Sure enough. <laughs> I quite literally uh, laughed uh, out loud. I didn't want to say LOL in a conversation. I don't like doing that. Uh, I'll just sign it to you badly. Sweet. <laughs> Beer news. <laughs> this reminds me of a Marin bit and talking about uh, someone texting while driving. Mm-hmm. But the last things that he sent were L-O. Sometimes the laughter isn't loud. <laughs> Brooklyn man registers his beer as an emotional support animal. <laughs> this man is on the something. Is it a bear with antlers? No. It, I used to have a sweatshirt that had that. No, and it wasn't even like a, a can or a bottle. It wasn't closed. It was a pint in a glass of beer, and he registered his beer as an emotional support animal, and he's waiting to hear back. But he does have the paperwork, and he did get on the bus, and nobody said anything to him about it. So? Um, I think it would be a bigger issue going on an aircraft with that. Uh, aircraft, yes. I was like, bus, yeah, yeah, whatever. Bus has potential to kill less people. Well, I don't know. Never mind. Have you seen Speed? <laughs> Actually, I've never seen Speed. Uh, watch the first one, not the second one. Uh, is there a third one? I get back to you on that. All right. Um, Steve, Arizona Girl Scouts pair cookies with wine and beer. So evidently, they've been sitting outside or going into the establishments in Arizona and selling more cookies. Reminds me of the old. Denver. Was it Denver? Or the- uh, I saw something where a Girl Scout set up shop outside of Weed Dispensary. Yep. That was brilliant. Every day I'm hustling. <laughs> Although, allegedly, every time I've used, I've not gotten the munchies, but I get the drunk munchies, so turnabout's fair play. Steve, at Water Brewing of Detroit is the next one to fall to Molson Coors. They- Uh-oh. Everybody's joining uh, Rage Against the Machine's second album, <laughs> The Evil Empire. <laughs> the uh, but every state has a different barrel law. I th- it's because it's not a federal law, it's state, right? Uh, yeah, well, it's like <clears throat> or whatever you're allowed to do to self distribute without going to a distributor, which was a big point of contention here with the. Uh, Craft freedom movement, and yeah. I think that may or may not have gone from twenty five k to fifty k a year. Yeah, and here's and something. I think Maryland had something dreadful like five thousand a year. I see your dreadful and raise you abysmal, Michigan, to vote on House Bill fifty three forty three, <laughs> which will double the barrel production from one thousand to two thousand. <laughs> That's apocalyptically horrible, and especially since Michigan has. Bells, bells and founders that yeah, are but plentiful here, but, but probably have their, I don't know, hell, if they own a distributor or something like that, then mm-hmm. that becomes less an issue. I would imagine so, because, let's see, uh, 
I'm jumping around here, but it, it kind of goes. Buck Bates, LLC, a hunting theme company out of Michigan, suing Bell's Brewing for the naming rights to their Deer Camp. So they had a product called Deer Camp, and they're suing Bell's because of it. Now, Steve, we remember when That's Bell's was suing Innovation Brewing in North for Carolina. For use of innovation. <clears throat> like, what's next? We're going to sue Nissan for driving innovation, which, no, they're not. <laughs> um. Every it seems like most Nissan, if if it's an Altima or Maxima, they're an asshole driver. Uh, Maxima's about gone extinct, and the twelve thousand dollar brand new Altima has brought forth all sorts of horrible drivers. I thought there was a Sentra and the Versa that was twelve thousand. The Altima uh, was like I, eighteen. I remember seeing Altimas for twelve not too long ago. Fuck, that's a cheap so, car. Uh huh. <laughs> and yes, it is. I mean, I know it's cheap, but you gotta wonder. Remember, Sandy had a Versa, mm-hmm. and at the time, it was the cheapest car you could get. It was like $9,000. I think $9, that was like the last car you could get for under ten grand, brand new. And I think it was the last car you could get with a manual transmission and roll-up windows, because hers had roll-up windows. Nice. I um, um, think the most bone stock of the Matrix vibes could as well. And the roll-up back glass window was a really neat touch. No. Not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to see like an old forerunner that had that That's like, instead so of a cool. power window. I like that. I like like yeah, I would like to have that in the touch. Jeep. I don't I don't that would take a lot of money and engine that would take more than the Jeep is worth to engineer that to be a thing. Trouble is it's angled mm-hmm. enough it wouldn't fit well. We could do a Safari pop out windows in the back. Sure. <laughs> So with good. Yeah, it's funny. Like the fir- first gen of my car had the back window that pops out, and the second gen doesn't. Yeah, I don't use it much, but it is handy. Like the front, uh, one you're talking about, or the no, the, no, the, the, back. Va- the, the, the back. very back one. Okay. It's got the the wiper on it and the back pop gotcha. out thing. The the Dodge truck had the uh, the ones up on the front where you could yeah. turn and. That was the vent, awesome. Vent windows. Those and were when awesome. air conditioning became more popular, those vanished. Oh, I know. It made me sad because the Dodge truck had it. And boy, you could, if you spun it all the way around, and it would just shoot you right in the face with air, like whatever temperature the air uh-huh. was outside. So it was actually, I actually like that a lot. Uh, but good riddance to Bells. I'm glad they're getting uh, sued there, for something stupid. There appears not to be a Speed 3. Yet. What is old is new again because. How many movies? They're re- they're making another Ghostbusters with um, the, uh, the, the man. So yeah, like son of initial director. Jason Reitman mm-hmm. is going to direct it instead of Ivan since now he's 100. Jesus, is he still alive? I don't know. Uh, well, both of them interviewed on WTF a couple years ago, so at least he mm. was then. Uh, the creator of Monty Python died today. Yeah. Uh, what was his name? It was Terry something. Uh, correction, there is a speed three, and is it I one of those? Recognize, like, I don't recognize any of this. I'll just say it's like National Lampoon, like uh, it's twelve. Like, yeah, it's like this. Uh, like you know, straight to VHS or something. Mm. Straight to Laserdisc. And I thought I thought I'd remembered seeing a third one, but um, it wasn't like a a big thing or a thing at all. It was like one of those uh, the Aladdin sequels or Little Mermaid sequels. <laughs> was uh, are those going to be on Disney Plus too? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Hey, Steve, I have more news. For uh, you. Terry Jones. Terry Jones. Okay, it's not unusual. Wait, uh, Eli Manning. Tom Jones. Tom Jones. <laughs> Eli Manning, quarterback of the New York Football Giants, now has a signature beer. Uh, from Source Brewing, S-O-U-R-C-E, Brewing, in Colts Neck, New Jersey. And it's called Elite Tribute, with the E-L-I capitalized. And here's the, fun, here's the funny fact. So I know you're not a big sports fan, and by that I mean you don't care at all. But um, Eli Manning has won two Super Bowls. He beat the New England Patriots both times. The style of this beer is an Imperial New England IPA. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to you guys, Source Brewing Company out of Colts Neck, New Jersey. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. And next Steve. It'd be a lot funnier if it was brought to you by Ebony Brewing Company, but whatever. True. Raw Magazine. 
What am I going to do with 40 subscriptions of Vibe? <laughs> hey, uh, Smart Mouth Brewing releases Zoinks, Blackberry Mango Goze, and it's inspired by what cartoon character? Scooby Dooby Doo. Yep. I can't imagine a weirder time to have a Scooby Doo themed beer than now. They're not making new ones. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. They had the movies. Mm. I mean, like, it's the, you know, in the last 15 years, like, some use of the property. Well, it wasn't Sarah Michelle Geller in it, the first one. That sounds right. Okay. Well, she. Which means I should have watched it then. I mean, you put it on mute. Just, yeah, like country music. Uh, <laughs> Florida Brewery partnering with the local animal shelter by putting adoptable dogs on all the cans. Did you see that? Yeah. That's really a great idea. What's the, what's the line? And dog beers have only had one. Correct. Um, but I don't think they should limit it to dogs only. It should be every adoptable pet. Dogs, cats, or... Monitor lizards. That would be great. <laughs> The uh, what was it? The uh, the iguana entertainment on a uh, Super Nintendo, or was it Sega? The NBA Jam was owned by Iguana Entertainment, and it had the iguana spinning a basketball on his claw. Oh, cool! Uh, NBA Jam appeared on everything back then. That is true. Sega Saturn. I never played a Saturn. I owned one briefly, and then I sold it to Mark. Can uh, Melcher. Okay. Uh, I don't think I've met him. I've, you would know if you had. I've met Natalie Melcher. Uh-huh. Uh, this would be her brother-in-law, Tony's brother. Oh, no, I have not met okay. him. We need to uh, get yeah, up with you, him again. You would know if you met Mark. We need to, we need to get up with Tony and, and, uh, yep. and her. Man, that would be, that'd be fun. They're always, I like the way she giggles. <laughs> She'll just be... <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, speaking of pets, though, my um, part-timer, he's a... Uh, hey, um, I have he he had a he has a hamster, and he's like, well, I'm getting another pet to go with my hamster. Didn't have a Richard <laughs> should have. I was like, what are you getting? He goes, a Goliath bird eating spider. I'm like, it's gonna eat the hamster. He goes, well, I have to get a separate cage for it. But yeah, you're right. I'm like, I was like, how much is that thing? He goes, actually, it's only seventy five dollars. I'm like, that's not bad. But how do your roommates feel about having a gigantic fucking spider the size of their hand in the house? He goes, they're they're not thrilled. <laughs> That said, my roommates are birds. <laughs> Have you seen how big some of those Goliath bird-eating spiders get? Yeah. Like the size of a human head. It's terrifying. Um, I'm more creeped out by that than uh, the thing I ate over Christmas, which was king crab legs. And yep, just the l- leg was, the, the box was three feet long mm-hmm. to keep these things in it. Yep, and it's delicious also, yes <laughs> i was like it's only like 10 pounds for 220 bucks like yeah. like, like how much is this gonna be like that was a surprisingly generous amount of food on three portions that's one of those where crab legs are usually a lot of work for not a lot of food and that was but a lot of work for a lot of food once they're that big it's worth it you ever eat the shell <laughs> Used to do shrimp tails because I was a weird kid. Uh, so, and by the way, don't. <laughs> what did I used to? Um, oh, I, I'd eat the peanut shells. <laughs> uh, if they've been fried, it's less terrible. By the way, yeah, these were it. Or, or if these, or if they've been boiled, that you don't care for. But if it sometimes they get soft enough, you can eat the whole thing. Yeah. But yeah, usually that's just rough. <laughs> El Chapo's daughter is releasing a beer named after her father. The El Chapo, what kind of beer would it possibly could be? Ice can lager? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Which in turn is going to be a German lager. Pretty much. That's the origins of Dos Equis. Made with just dirty like the, water. <laughs> I don't see what Boston has to do with any of this. Does Boston have dirty water? Uh, well, at least the song says it. I love that dirty water. Who sings that? Oh, Boston, you're my home. Um... Mighty Mighty no, Boston. No, no, the songs. I'm sure they covered it. <sighs> it it rings somewhat of a bell. I just don't. I, know like, who sings I, it. I know the reference and don't know who did it. I guess I, at least they're not making it with Flint, Michigan water. Hey yo, man, you already smashed your Forty Creek, man. Duh, it's really fucking good. <laughs> what can I say? I've been having a month. It actually smells like the Bosnian liquor we had, except it tastes better. 
The Standells, because I was not going to remember that one. The Standell. D-E-L-L? Yeah. From 1966. Fuck, that was a long time ago. (laughs) 66. My dad was 20 years old. And your dad was, what, 18? Uh, then turning 13. That's right. My dad's, like, way older than your dad. (laughs) My folks were both out of 53. Okay. Yeah, my mom's 54. My dad's 46. Um... Yeah, brother 65. <laughs> Craig would have been one when his son came out. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, my cousin Mark would have been negative two. Yeesh. So, Steve, um, this was on NPR and on one of the craft brew websites, and it's dry January. So now people are taking. Uh, January off, so kind of like the sober October thing that the four <laughs> the four comedians uh-huh. do. Um, yeah, at least then like it rhymes. Like dry January. It's like ja ja. I mean, it, it doesn't rhyme. It just no. It's just two different letters. Or at least you know, have some fun with it. January. That sounds awful. It sounds as awful as January does. But here's the thing about January: like, don't cut out that month. That like, there's nothing else to do when it's cold. What do you? What else are you gonna do? You just light the fire inside. Or as in my case, flip the switch, and uh, which Thomas says it's a fake fireplace. I'm like, yeah, go ahead, stick your fucking hand in it. See how see how fake burnt you get by sticking yeah. my hand in my fake fireplace. <laughs> you know, uh, get gas fire still a fire, bub. It's still a fucking. Or fire. one of my funny funniest thing I've seen in the store was electric fireplace for sale with heat. Well, I sure would hope so. <laughs> Maybe it's cold. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, you have a computer monitor playing YouTube. <laughs> With ten hours of crackling fire. What was it? Cold. It was heat miser, and then what was the other one? Oh, Remember the year uh, without Santa Claus. Oh goodness! <laughs> what is it? He looked like it was a cold fire. So yeah, was like, that would what it would be like. Chill, you, chill fire bar and grill of Denver, North Carolina. Never been. Chill fire. That is a place's name, or at least it was. That sounds pretty fucking cool, actually. Uh, speaking yeah. of speaking of food, are we Mexican afterwards? Sure. Sweet. So, Steve, about the dry January, right. I heard I the finished funniest... Finished spaghetti earlier and had a, having Mexican food later. This is going to be a bad day for acid reflux as well. I heard the funniest shit about non-alcoholic beer. So, it was like dry January, you can enjoy non-alcoholic beer. <laughs> en- <laughs> enjoys a stretch. What I heard was non-alcoholic beer is like being invited to a threesome and then spending the whole time masturbating in the corner. <laughs> I said... Bravo to you, sir or madam, who created that, because it's absolutely the truth. It appears that chill fire is still a thing. What what kind of food is it? <clears throat> this thing's so freaking slow. <laughs> well, I fixed the inter- like the internet in here, so well, enhance old tablet on an old tablet. We could we could guess burgers. Steaks, uh, chickens, beers. Are right, so you going the American route? I'm going some kind of weird fusion, and I have nothing to gain. The gain? I have nothing to base that on. Oh, Emily's home. Okay. Now I have it on my phone. The Simply Safe. You know, so and so turned the alarm off. Blah blah blah. So now we can't cheat on each other anymore. Wait so a while, minute. So I was doing that, Steve. Uh, Cheating? What? Paps. It's launching Captain Pap Seabird the IPA, four point five percent. If you need like the most hipster sounding thing ever, oh yes, it's especially uh, if this was ten years ago. Yeah, four point five percent. Does it still come with a beard? That said, uh, their old tankard was fantastic. What year and what style was uh, that? Some early and Kayla me dating, so four years ago. That was four years, twenty sixteen. That would it would have been okay three and a half years ago, but yeah, uh, kind of like a Bach. Really, it tasted a lot like the uh, random Bach beers that Audi carries. Those I remember those because uh, there had been an art gallery in Noda sponsored by Paps that was that they had random free events and we went one night and it was pouring, but it was this old house that had been gutted. And then turned to an art art gallery, mm-hmm. and they had free beer courtesy of Pabst. Ooh. Now, versus going to a bari, and this is the next best thing you can get your PBRs for a buck fifty. Yeah, but 
Uh, you need to chase it with a Pepto, but hey, man. I mean, it's, cheap's good. It is. I mean, cheap. It, it cheap's good, but <laughs> I I do have my limit. Like, I'll do dollar fifty high lifes all day, but like, I just can't do PBR. It just has no flavor at all. At least high life has a flavor. You might not like it, but it does have a taste to it. PBR just can't find any flavor, and if I'm gonna drink water, I'll just get a free water because free's cheaper than one fifty. Uh, God damn it! Come back. Steve, I have one more bit of beer news. Did it pull up yet? Yeah. All right, what is it? Uh, definitely American Fair. All right. All right, so we've got steaks, ribs. We've got... Steak ribs? Steak ribs. Nice. Uh, pork ribs. Uh, fried shrimp, tuna, crab cakes. All right, step up from... Burgers and whatnot. Uh, got a chicken alfredo, shrimp scampi. Have you been to Hawthorns lately here in Mint Hill? Mm, I haven't been to any Hawthorns lately. Oh, it's still good. <laughs> I, I would hope so. <laughs> and I, the garlic I, knots I, the size I, of your I, fist. I like them. Five dollars for six garlic knots the size of your fist. Uh-huh. Uh, pretty fucking groovy. Steve, one more bit of beer news for you. You're gonna like this. U.S. troops stationed in Iceland drink the entire beer supply in Reykjavik in four days. <laughs> What are they going to do? Fight a volcano? <laughs> Bravo to you, sirs and madams stationed in Reykjavik. <laughs> so what I've, from what I've heard, I've, I've, known, I've known two people that went the... to Iceland. Uh, Karin's been, and somebody I went to high school with. Okay. Uh, they went to Re- uh, Reykjavik. Uh, Karin went to Reykjavik, and then they rented a car and drove around the island, which takes no about time. 30 minutes. <laughs> the, the entire island nation has a population of 300k yeah it, and it, it's not big 200k of them live in Reykjavik I think mm-hmm. and then the other hundred are spread out yeah um Karin said it is so dead like when the sun goes down in those small towns that are not Reykjavik it's dead no gas is up. like if you run out of gas you're fucked till the next morning you're just gonna have to sleep in your car <laughs> it it's but she goes it's beautiful what time of year did she go I will get back to you. I would hope not winter. No. <laughs> but we are thinking uh, they kind of want to do a couple's trip next year. So we were thinking about like going to Japan. Oh, wow. Yeah. So like going, going places. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'll be in Toronto in May. And I cannot wait because uh, everybody says Toronto's like just like New York City, except the people are more friendly and everything's cleaner. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I can deal with that because they have a little Italy. They got a Chinatown. They have a distillery district. And we are wow. our condo, the, where we're staying, the B&B that's not the B&B, Airbnb that's n- not supposed to be an Airbnb. Wink, wink, wink. Uh-huh. Uh, your, is, your, your borrowed apartment. is in the distillery district. It's nice. so weird to get that... Um, I read. Did I read the message to you? It was something incredibly seedy. It was very seedy. But the guy has like a four point nine out of five on Airbnb. So it's even some of the reviews were like check in process is kind of sketchy. But once you're in and you're checked in, they don't bother you anymore. I just tell security you're here for the orgy. I do that at work sometimes. They're like, "How you doing, AJ?" I'm like, "This orgy's off to a slow start." <laughs> So, Steve, there's a reason uh, that I brought this Canadian whiskey, and it was, what, the day after we did episode 50? Yes, it was, and uh, at least that's when the news broke, which is funny they mentioned going to Toronto, because the airport is YYZ, why? Yep, yep, and I read why it was and, YYZ. And, no, it's impossible. <laughs> that's why I'm wearing my Archer shirt. Uh, yes, and I love that. You know, it says your authority is not recognized in Fort Kickass. <laughs> well, that was that was like the first couple of seasons. Or yeah, when it was good. good. Yeah, it got better, but yeah, it definitely hit a slump around six, seven, eight, nine, nine, and ten were interesting if off the rails. Have you have you watched much of BoJack yet? No. God damn, it's fucking good. It's dark. God, it's dark. It's really dark. The last six episodes, I think, are coming out next week. And that's that's the end of it. So it was six seasons, which I kind of like. I Bojack don't... Glue. Mm, that's the that's the, the, the sequel like to everything. I don't know what the prequel is. Stop with the prequels, man. Just do shit in order. I'm tired of, <laughs> I'm tired of having yeah, like, to Here's think. this, and like, here's the origin story of this. Like, I don't care. Okay. Um, 
somebody's or some the the thread on I don't know why it was started on Atheist Republic, but it was uh the worst movie ever. And I said Strange Wilderness. That was that was the worst movie I've ever seen. I don't know what that is. It had Justin Long. It was fucking stupid. By the way, we just got off the topic. We were just explaining <laughs> to why I got the Canadian it's whiskey. A, uh, YYZ. Al- albino alligator. <laughs> Um, How did you make a bank heist boring? Uh, yeah, that. So the great, the one, the only Neil Peart died. So Peart. Apparently, it's Peart. It is Peart. Mm, I don't think he's coming after me for it, but uh, let's haunt you. Died of brain cancer. Although if you spelled that way, of sixty-seven. Although if spelled that way, why isn't part like heart? I guess Peart would make sense because a pair, and just add a t to it. Oh, well, it's Canadian, so what can you do? Well, you know, my favorite, uh, my favorite, one of my favorite songs is What About Love by Hert. <laughs> 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 They're not Canadian, are they? Uh, no. Okay. I smell Doritos. Um, but the greatest, the great rush, uh, is no, well, they weren't even touring they, anyway. 2018, I think they, uh, they, by the end of the R40 tour in 2015, that was officially unofficially it, and that would have been around the time of his brain cancer diagnosis. Yeah, and I think 2018, Alex Lifeson said that uh, they were probably getting done. arthritic. Uh, I know everyone's in their northern 60s, and to do what they did was not an easy thing to do. That like, well, the drummer gets to sit down the whole time. Yeah, but he wrote he's. You know, surrounded 350 degrees by drums. Yeah. That's going to be a lot of work in your arms, a lot of work in your feet, a lot of mental capacity to be able to do this <clears throat> like the machine that he was. He also wrote a lot of the lyrics. Yeah. Like a lot of the lyrics. And regrets having based some of it on Ayn Rand. <laughs> <It's> like, <yeah. laughs> No, the, the liberal li- libertarian, a, a liberaltarian. Um, Whoops. Uh, libertarianism <laughs> is astrology for men. <laughs> uh, yeah, but no, a lot of people don't realize that a lot of uh, bands, like some bands, the singer does write all the music, all the lyrics, everything. Like Breaking Benjamin does that. Um, Smashing Pumpkins does that too. Billy Corgan basically. Billy Corgan is basically Smashing Pumpkins. Trent Reznor is Nine Inch Nails. Yeah, they, well, especially if your backing band is like rotates. Mm-hmm. That all right? That's been less the case with Pumpkins, and I presume with Breaking Benjamin. But say Nine Inch Nails or Queens of Stone Age, you get your front man, and then you have whoever else is playing with them at whatever given time. We discussed who the. Uh, uh, lead guitar or the guitar player in Nine Inch Nails during the Head Like a Hole tour was, didn't we? Did I tell you? Uh, that was probably in one ear and out the next. Richard Patrick. Oh yeah, the, the, went on to become Filter. Filter, and I think actually the brother went, of the T One Thousand. So that mm-hmm. makes him the uh, T Nine Hundred Ninety Nine or the T One Thousand and One. Yes. Um, but I think no, actually, I think he was on the downward spiral too, because I don't think filter really became a thing until after ninety four. Yeah, downward I think spiral ninety five six would have been short bus. Yeah, sh- six sounds right. Yeah, hey man, nice shot was on short bus. Uh huh. Um, and no, welcome to the fold was on ninety the the two thousand release. I had to take a picture on it. Okay. Yeah, well, welcome to the. F- Fold. Actually, I think "Welcome to the Fold" was actually the name of the album. But and damn, always, this is Rush. I always streak on airplanes when I do. <laughs> yeah, um, that's funny that that song is actually about that. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, uh, he was not on their first album in '74. Yes, you're right. Uh, so who was, was the it? Second one, John. Close. I don't remember John the... Rutsey. Yeah, that they formed in '68. And Parrot replaced John Rutsey in July 74, before they even did their first USA tour. So they never toured USA before before then. So he didn't initially drum on Working Man, but could play the snot out of it in live recordings. Uh, yeah. He was never mind, that machine. song rocks. Yes, it does. 40 million albums sold worldwide. 40 
million. I think 20 million in the U.S., 25 million in the U.S., but 40 million unofficial. That's unofficial. But uh, I have all of the albums listed here and the years they came out. Goodness. Yes. Yeah, so we got Rush, the self title from 74. Fly by Night was 1975. Feel free to. At Van by Night Krieger. <laughs> yes. Feel free to interject with. All right. So I, I like Rush. We should have had Toby on this episode because he loves Rush. But um, feel free to interject with songs off of these albums because I, I know the songs a lot of the times, but I'm not as familiar um, with the catalog. So I don't, I would not be able to say, oh, well, that's on this album, except maybe like Tom Sawyer, I could probably tell you. But um, are you pulling up a couple now to refresh yeah, the old I, yes. membrane? But I don't think they had any really big singles on the first couple of CDs until 2012, 2112. I think, think. Mm-hmm. What is it with bands and naming albums numbers? Van Halen, the 5150, which PV actually made a 5150 head um, for Eddie Van Halen. And now it's something, 6505, because Eddie Van Halen has his own amp now. It's called a 5150. Yes. So the new 5150s made by PV are called the 6505. <laughs> uh, okay. I'll stick with Mesa Boogie. <laughs> hey, whatever works. <laughs> PRS and Mesa Boogie is like ham and cheese, man. I might have some more of this uh, whiskey, actually, because that's really fucking good. Established in 1992, by the way. Forty Creek Distillery in Ontario, Canada. Ooh, I wonder if it's in Toronto. That'd be cool to God, go see yeah. do a thing. That would be cool, because, yeah. All right. <laughs> or it's like, this happens to be in Ontario. Ontario just keeps going north, by the way. that's It's in Grimsby. Eh. That sounds remote. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, it's near some water, so that doesn't bode well for my um, Queen Elizabeth Way. Oh, shit. It, dude, we're going to Niagara Falls anyway. It's on the way to Niagara Falls. Nice. I wonder if they do it, like it, a... Uh, town in Ontario, Canada. And then we can stop at JJ's on the Dock Eatery. <laughs> Canadian. <laughs> that, that was the that's the that's the listing of the kind of food that they serve. What is Canadian food? Is everything in maple syrup? Poutine and elk. Ooh, poutine made with elk meat with maple syrup on top. Do go on. <laughs> Beat still your heart because it's going to kill you. Well, something's got to kill me. Liver, heart. Fight. After Fly By Night, we had Caress of Steel in 75. Same year. Fly By Night and Caress of Steel came out in 1975. And then 2112 came out in 1976. Steve was a negative five. <laughs> <laughs> Your parents were married in what year? Uh, Early 76. Oh, cool. So they just celebrated 44. Mm-hmm. No, did they? Did Rush have single on twenty one twelve? I think they did. I'm trying to get caught up on my Wikipedia here. Uh oh. Would it lie to you? I figure uh, Bastille Day was the biggest one in the previous. On a uh, steel, yeah, or fly by night steel. Steel. I'm on twenty one twelve, and that. I, was, I thought they had these, a couple. Like it, it's rad, but nothing's <clears throat> standing out on this right now. Oh, there's no, no like, um, worldwide single or... Right. That was weird, because I thought and there was on one. The, on... Uh, on Curse of Steel, I think I'm Going Bald is regarded as their worst song. Oh, really? I need to listen to it, then. Which is funny, because Getty Lee singing this... Famously has long hair. Like, if you've ever watched Metal of Headbangers Journey, and like, oh yeah, here's this prog rock dude on the metal dock, but was really entertaining to watch him, like, chime in on the everything. Yeah, he does not sound anything like he looks or speaks. He doesn't speak in that tone of voice no. either. Claudio Sanchez is the same way from, um, God damn it. Um, Coheed and Cambria guy with the huge hair he has a really high pitched voice so um, but he, he that's the only thing I couldn't get I don't love that vocal style but 
he was always in key. Like it was, it was, he was talented. It's just like I didn't prefer that sound. Mm-hmm. Did, what did you think of it? Did it bother you that much or no? I wasn't big into Rush until going to one of the NC State band reunion football games <clears throat> with Dad. Mm-hmm. And one of the guys there was raving about his love of Neil Peart from Rush. Like, all right, this guy might be onto something. And then from there, got into it. But prior to it had been, all right, Tom Sawyer seems to always play if I'm at Carowinds in the Wayne's World part. (laughs) That was about it for my exposure. Didn't they? And then discovering, I really like Red Barchetta. Limelight, mm-hmm. subdivisions. Mm-hmm. Um, after 20- and then uh, after guitar rock hero band, the love of Y Y Z. So you're gonna know what albums are on those, right? Uh, the Hemispheres through Signals mm-hmm. era is gonna be what everybody is most familiar with, gotcha. including myself. Cool, because we got after twenty one. Can name you anything off Presto? Sorry, bunch of bunny rabbits. All right, so after Farewell to King, or after twenty one twelve, we had Farewell to Kings in seventy seven. Then right again in seventy eight with Hemispheres, and that Hemispheres almost broke the band up. Really? That was their most sophisticated stuff. Oh. And them trying to tour Hemispheres about killed them. People don't realize how hard it is to um, not only be a three-piece band, but do it in a way that you can perform the songs live and do them justice. Because a lot of times it can sound very thin, but they, I mean, they had some touring musicians with them, but... For the most part, they could duplicate the sound of the record, which is very difficult to only do in a three-piece band. Because Getty played keys too, but playing keys and bass and mm-hmm. singing, like, um, it, it, it's, it's not easy. <laughs> yeah, of Kings, uh, Xanadu, and Closer to the Heart. Xanadu would be the most okay. familiar ones. Gotcha. Wasn't Zan- Xanadu wasn't the, a really long one? I don't. Uh, Xanadu was like just like a one of them. Was like one of the shorter long. ones. Okay. Yeah, the uh the the last huge song is yet to pop. Okay. Hemispheres was what, four songs on it? Yeah, nineteen seventy eight. And then after Hemispheres we Oh uh, have- yeah, on on Hemispheres the trees the second shortest. It's funny to have this broken down like, all right, tracks, but then the subtracks within tracks because <laughs> Cygnus that was on Kings and coming in the hemispheres mm-hmm. uh, was a pair of 20 minute songs. Jesus Christ. There's n- uh, the, the, re- the record company's like, yeah, don't make a giant epic song. And then it did it anyway. And then <laughs> that started to break them. And the trees is one of my favorites as well. Like it's, I don't think it's really about trees. Did I tell you about um, the song reach down? From Temple of the Dog. Negative. It's 11 minutes long. What they did was the song was actually like only five minutes long. But then when they were in the studio recording, um, they just kept playing that, that long jam part in the middle that's really kind of ethereal and like this, there's a bunch of guitar solos. They're playing and <laughs> the engineer and there's doing this. Stop. Stop. We're no, we're done. Like and they just kept going and kept going <laughs> and they ended up keeping it in there as as a song. It's like What are you gonna do? Run out of tape? It's of uh, that and why not? You got some of the best musicians to come mm-hmm. out of Seattle. Not even that, the some of the best musicians to come out of music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so well, fuck it, let them keep going. You wanna write an eleven minute song? And Rush, you wanna write a twenty minute song? Write a fucking twenty minute song. It doesn't have to be a single. <laughs> it's like it's not your conventional jam band, but it's prog rock and the way they play Oh, yes. They're jamming. They'll just play as long as they want. Yes, they just will. Just a completely different sound than Fish, Grateful Dead, yeah, uh, Widespread Panic. That's a completely different sound to it. I like coconuts. You can break them open. They smell like ladies lying in the sun. That's Widespread Panic. And if I had my way, I'd give a coconut to everyone. That, it, I, I kept thinking that with a name like that, that's got to be way more frenetic a noise than they make. It is not. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's it's Diet Pepsi. <laughs> I have not gotten into fish though. Should I? Me, me neither. Okay. Um, I, I I can't even uh, give it a yay or nay. Um, and for Grateful Dead, I played the hell out of Skeletons from the Closet from '74. That's their best of from then. Getting outside that bubble, things get weird. I know, and I like er. <laughs> I like Primus, and I can't and I can't get into some of that. But mm-hmm. at least that's. The musicianship's just so wacky. It's like funk, psychobilly, I don't fucking know what. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, after Permanent Waves. Or, on or permanent after waves, we uh, have Permanent Waves. Yeah. Uh, Spirit of Radio was their first real hit. Mm-hmm. And Free Will, you can't throw a rock at 95.7 without hearing that once an hour. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was 1980. Yep. You're getting closer uh, to your birth. Hey. <clears throat> and then moving pictures with the most wonderful album cover ever because what are they doing? It's movers hauling pictures. <laughs> they are moving pictures on moving pictures. Uh, that's good stuff. Moving pictures was, I think, their commercially most successful album. That sounds right. Yes. And that had Limelight. Yep, uh, Tom Sawyer. Tom Sawyer. Like I said earlier, you, you know, couldn't make it through Wayne's World at Carowinds without hearing that. Party time. Uh, Red Barchetta, YYZ, <laughs> Limelight. The Camera Eye was their last over 10-minute song. Hmm. I listened to Red Barchetta for the first time in a mint uh, 86 Starion in Pigeon Forge. <laughs> and it was awesome. <laughs> uh, so what you should have done was cut the roof off for full effect then. Fair. And, you know, have a prancing horse on the front. By the way, they have new shirts on a uh, $6 shirts that have the Mustang logo and it's just Ferrari on the underside of it. <laughs> <laughs> and all what in the Matt Damon is this? <laughs> I'll watch that movie one of these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so in um off of moving pictures, was there anything else of consequence? Uh less similar with witch hunt or vital signs. By the way, you can tell like real music fans actually do like Rush, like and, and Rush was not in it for the chicks. Because Ru- Rush yeah, the, that, it's like Dream Theater. No you It was famously female repellent until their last tour. Yep. And was it uh Dream theater shows were like 99% male. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's a different beast all of its own, even though that's progressive rock also. There's there's so many different genres of rock and metal that it's mm-hmm. hilarious. I can appreciate it to some extent, but like stuff like Yngwie, Yngwie Malmsteen, and like stuff like that, like neoclassical shred, like that's boring as fuck to me. Just watching a guy just sit there and play really fucking fast over a blues track is just boring as fuck to me. No virtuosity for you, man. I'm okay with that. I would rather have the, have soul than... Like, Dimebag could play fast, but he actually... He didn't play every solo super fast. It, you know, it just... It fit the song. Well, it's the same as Rush. Like, Alex Lifeson is a great guitar player. Really, really super guitar player. He had a signature Paul and Reed he, Smith... And he keeps getting too. trounced by the other two members of the band... <laughs> so he's a masterful guitarist, but no one's giving him props. Like, uh, obviously, the focus lately has been on Peart, mm-hmm. but Getty being able to sing "Love It or Hate It" mm-hmm. and bass and keyboards is no easy task. Well, singing. Um, my buddy Levin was was explaining that singing and playing bass is actually harder because you're singing um, the oct- an octave up. Like you're playing your 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 bass your instrument is playing the the lower octaves mm-hmm. and you're singing the upper octaves so you have to know the key and the pitch like it's not like you can match it to your guitar and everything it's not that ever, not that it matches your guitar perfectly but it's it's harder when the register is that much lower we're getting really nerdy with this sorry guys <laughs> but that it, it really is it's, it's a lot our harder. podcast will nerd out if you want to <clears throat> you would nerd out too if it happened to you. Do 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 do. The death metal version of that would be great. <laughs> Go on. 
<laughs> wonder, wonder what Cannibal Corpse is doing these days. <laughs> Fuck nothing. <laughs> Are you almost out of beer? Yep. Uh, me too. What do you think's next? I kind of want something really dark and sweet. I might go for that nitro hot cocoa. Ugh. Anything's fair game in there, so, except for the Bourbon County and the Oma Gang. Yeah. But everything else is fair game, so gra- grab what thou wilt. All right. Whatever for you two. I want the I want the nitro hot cocoa. All right. No offense, Coco Face. <laughs> drinking your cat. Uh, drinking the cat. Drinking the cat. Er, the cat. Drinking the cat. Checking the cash. <laughs> you remember those? So ever do, do you every now and then have um flashbacks to old commercials? All right, I do too. I did the um the honeycomb. Com- yeah, that one. That's the one I want. The honeycomb commercial had stuck in my head this morning. Honeycomb's big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not small. No, no, no. <laughs> Emily had no idea what the fuck I was I talking about. I thought that's about. always stuck in your head. Fair. Or, remember in the early 2000s, the honeycomb mascot was that big bulbous blob of hairy face? Yeah. That was and I, terrifying. And then it got adopted by Cricket Mobile. Oh, it did, didn't Those it? weird fuzzy things. Ugh. Oh yeah. Go. Oh, god damn it. All right. Ready? One, two, three. Nice. <laughs> he just has an extra burble. You yeah, the, the, with you the got, nitro. You got the burble tune beer. <laughs> it's burble barrel aged. <laughs> um, Steve, what? after moving pictures, we have signals. Um that was nineteen eighty two, the year my sister was born. And yeah, sadly yeah. enough, her and Josh were separated. And I just found that out. That's why they needed the couch. Or why she needed the couch. I feel so fucking bad for her. But you know what? She's such a good mom to those girls. Like, it's... I, I hate it for her, but, but she's going to be okay by herself. She's very self-sufficient and stubborn, just like me. Because we're all related. So, uh, so cheers to her. I need Aww, to go... I'll probably go so see her tomorrow. I'm, uh, I'm going to try to anyway, but... But uh, sorry to depress everybody. Signals, nice to meet you. So which of these subdivisions is she moving to? Because that song is rad. I do not know, actually. Oh, it's... Oh, much like everything they do, it's weird, but it's wonderful. True. Um, that That's when they're getting big into their synth phase. Well, you know, everyone was doing it. Even Mr. Yep. Van Halen was doing it. <laughs> Yeah, but this was two years before 1984 and then discovering what a keyboard was. By the way, you know that album cover was banned in the 80s and also Poison's album cover that had the um, the long tongue. The, you remember 1984 album cover? Yeah. The, the angel baby smoking. The, oh, it's an angel. It's an angel. Different. Baby smoking. <laughs> and they banned it. It's they a- actually blurred out the cigarette and the... <laughs> I promise you they did, because my sister had a copy of both of them, and the Poison album cover was, I think, um, it wasn't Brett Michaels, it was, um, god damn it, the fucking guitar player for um, Poison. Um, Vince Neil? That's that's the singer of Motley Crue. uh, Don't tell me, please don't tell me. Um, Oh my god. Look what the cat dragged in. Uh, yeah, I wasn't going to land on that. C.C. DeVille. By the way, do you know who tried out for the lead guitar player for Poison and got told no? Slash. Yep. And then they got C.C. DeVille. <laughs> but C.C. DeVille's actually a pretty good guitar player, too. So, And he has freakishly white teeth, and he looks like Gary Busey now. <laughs> who now looks more like Nick Nolte. <laughs> and Nick Nolte looks like a fucking goblin. <laughs> <clears throat> So, Steve, after signals... I just looked this up, and you're not wrong. <laughs> it's all just there. Isn't that terrifying? And this is a picture from 11 years ago, too. Jesus. Like, uh, yikes. Yeah, that's nightmare fuel. Uh, For being born in 62, you sure look older, bub. <laughs> uh, Grace Under Pressure was 1984. For Rush. By the way, we're just halfway through the albums. <laughs> yep. And this is when it's about to get obscure, real obscure. Uh, yeah, the only one ringing a bell is Red Sector A, uh, and that was 
based on Getty's parents having been liberated at the end of World War II by British troops. Yep, because they were Auschwitz survivors. Uh, one Auschwitz, <clears throat> one Bergen Belsen. Now Au- Auschwitz that- was in Poland. Um, Berk and um, Bergen Belsen, I think, was in Germany. Jesus, man, this is this is the weirdest. This might be the weirdest episode I think we've ever fucking done. <laughs> very, very obscure. <laughs> What'd y'all talk about? Oh, Rush, the Holocaust, uh, a, a guy having a beer as a pet. <laughs> Have you tried this one before? The nitro hot cocoa? No. Please no. try that. Okay. That's fucking delicious. It tastes like chocolate milk. Ovaltine needs to step their game up. You're my Brovaltine. Even Emily liked it. Mikey likes nothing. And even like when Baker came over, I was like, "You want to try this?" He's like, "Yep." He goes, "How many more of those you got?" <laughs> I said, "Well, you're you're playing Can lead guitar on this album." So. <laughs> He's got another kid on the way in March. Hey, I said, "Congratulations." I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't see what the Jim Blossoms has to do with anything. We of need this. to do a Jim Blossoms up. Did we do a Jim Blossoms episode? No, we haven't. We need to do one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Talk about another band that I initially didn't like. You still, you, all right. So you, but you still don't like Matchbox 20. No. And I put them in the same category in style and substance and songwriting. There, there are. I think it, it could very much be overplaying with that one too. It could be, but there's as, as well as his Santana effort. I didn't hate it. It's uh, just sheer overplay. True, but do, do you remember seeing the video? No. The one of the dancers in there was actually his wife, but I digress. Hey Um. So we had Grace under pressure in eighty four. Sorry, but she's taken. We had power windows in 1985, which would be actually a luxury item in 1985. Sure enough. Uh, well, hell, Mom's 75 and Power had it, and that was replaced by an 88 Voyager that didn't. So uh, I was very confused. Yeah, my 80s, all the conquests, well, most of the conquests had uh, power windows. The early ones had the roll-ups, but, but it also had an eight-band equalizer on the stereo, which was bonkers yeah ha- having like the little flip switches yes i actually just donated away my old boom box from 1992 that had a three band equalizer on it it's nice like, this thing's seen no use yep yep uh yeah double cassettes no built-in cd player but it had an audio input as well so you could do it without one of the cassette adapters right so it it was a nice thing, and apparently, after donating, I looked it up. Like, what's this going for on eBay? Thirty six dollars and zero bids. Like, all right, this could be worth this to somebody, but apparently, nobody's clamoring for this. Not quite. In the parlance of the day, ghetto blaster. Yeah, I was explaining to one of the people uh, that I work with that on my field day, um. I was the coolest guy at field day because I brought my boom box with me and I was playing boys to men's two album with, I think it took six D batteries or eight. And I mean, like, it was enough to make you hurt like, for this art. Oh yes. And uh, they said, how long did the batteries last? I was like, if you don't stop the tape when it's playing, maybe an hour and a half. And you're so you could get dead. through <laughs> an entire 90 minute cassette. Yeah. <laughs> And then if you wait a little while and then switch the batteries around, you, you get another you get song. Another song. <laughs> yeah, the good old days. Or you have to call in the request you want to hear on the radio. Oh yeah, and re- sit beside the record and the play button to record the cassette. And they were they were mind blown by the, this. I always found the double button pushing to record baffling, but I guess that's just to make sure you know, you're not taping over an actual tape, never mind the cassette itself has a tab in it, much like the old school floppy disks, to keep you from recording over yourself. But if you put a piece of tape over the hole, mm-hmm. then it's good to go or something or not or whatever. Then you don't have to coordinate your your, your finger pushing and, and such. Uh, this was set up so like it was small enough I could just mash it with both. Well, you've been in Charlotte. Or ma- mash the both and then hit pause. And what you do is unpause it, then we'll record. Mm-hmm. 
That was the trick. Yes. Um, As I bumped up my extent of it back in Charlotte, 15 years effective in June. So 14 and a half right now. So you're aware of 95.1, right? Uh-huh. The radio station, which plays hot fucking garbage. Uh, Yeah, and I think overcompressed and at a higher speed than usual. Yeah, you noticed that. All right, so most like, radio stations. Like, uh, they cracked me up the first time I noticed, like, there's plenty of shitty MP3s on this. Most radio stations will compress your file. Like, when I had my song played on 106.5, they, they had it compressed even more than I send it to them. So if you're ever going to play your song on a radio station like that, send them a file that is uh, loud but not, like, mastered because they're going to re-limit it and turn it up anyway. Yeah, the... Uh it's a copy of a copy of a copy effect. Also Nine Inch Nails. The, the best Nine Inch Nails song. Oh, fucking, they they opened <laughs> with so that good. when we went to see them. Uh, so do we dare go through any more singles on Rush or just kind of uh, go through the albums? Cause like, think, I don't know the rest of the catalog that well. I don't either. So we had Power Windows in 85 and then Hold Your Fire in 87. And then Presto in 89. And you said that had bunnies on it? Yeah, it was, it was definitely their cutest album cover. Gotcha. No standout songs, but it, it's definitely their best looking album cover. Then we had Roll the Bones in 1980, 1991. Uh, time Thank stands you. still and Hold Your Fire is good. Yeah. Um, da, da, Roll da, the da, Bones da, da, in 91. That'll get stuck in your head. Be careful. Yes. Counterparts in 93. Great album title, Test for Echo in 1996. Vapor Trails in 02. Snakes and Arrows 07, and Clockwork Angels was their last studio album in and, 2012. And their next to last tour, if I recall correctly. Correct. That was fucking loud. Why was that so loud? <laughs> By the way, I looked at those podcast mics uh, and everything. Dr- Dreamline and Roll the Bones is fantastic, and that's where the We're Only Immortal for the Limited Dreamline. Time comes from. That's Yeah, that's one I have heard. I have heard that one. Uh, it's been fucking 18,000 yeah. years, but I've heard it. Um that that's a contender for next play quote. I'm probably going a different direction, but that is a contender. Yes. Well, if um if Toby can't go with me, you are cordially invited to uh to G A B F. Oh dear. <laughs> Hero of counterparts is pretty red. I feel like I've given him enough warning at this point that he's mm-hmm. probably gonna be able to make this one. But that's that's a lot of like say two. Have they hammered that out yet? Like the ins and outs of so you going or however that works. So Mr. John said that in the early spring they get together all of the people who have done it, and they send that one mass email out explaining the process and then the booking and such. So that's fine by me because booking in March for September is is fine. That's perfectly that, that's okay. That's enough. And I'll just stay. At an Airbnb, um, because I was I was telling Emily like you know we we've been staying at all these hotels and stuff when mm-hmm. we're traveling, but Airbnb is big enough now. See, at first, when um when I heard about Airbnb, I'm like I don't want to stay with somebody. I don't know these fucking people. Most of the time, they're not even there. Like ninety nine percent of the time, they're not there. Yeah, it's just a matter of uh, somebody's got a house they're renting out if they're going to be out of town or if they happen to have a second house in town that they just rent out. Right, which is part of how and why rents are so expensive mm-hmm. that you know people can make a lot more money doing these short term leasings. Yep. And I think that's why that a building that I'm stay that we're staying in in Toronto is they they they're not Airbnb friendly because they know people are making money off the backs of mm-hmm. they don't want they want to make the money off of the, the the patrons. They don't want the patrons to make money off of them, which is kind of what they're doing, really. Uh, well, but you know what? If I owned an entire apartment building and I'm making my rent and my budget every month, I couldn't give a fuck less where that money comes from. <laughs> yep. That's just me, though. Now, is, is the place currently burning down, or is the plumbing being exploded by Keith Moon throwing cherry bombs down the pipes? No? <laughs> cool. Then let's keep doing what we're doing. The Alice Cooper had Keith Moon stay with him and his wife, and he's like, he just dressed up in a French maid outfit and was just sitting around the house. <laughs> and his wife was like, who is this guy again? <laughs> Or the, uh, uh, yeah, um, honey, what is a Rolls Royce? It's in the swimming pool. It says, uh, it's like, you know, half the thing, like maybe a quarter of the things you hear about me and, and Ozzy are probably true because everything you've ever heard about Keith Moon is true and you've only heard a third of it. 
Keith Moon died of alcohol poisoning? Yeah, apparently he had 40 shots in the course of 24 hours. And this would absolutely be out, be no, after being well seasoned, so the first 10 don't hit. Right. I imagine in 24 hour period though, he probably condensed that to yeah, 8 hours. Uh-huh. And I've had quite a bit of booze in my life, but I've never done 40 shots. No, I think after about 4 I'm set for the next 48. Like the Is that a show day before any? The next 48. <laughs> Uh, something, something, 48 hours about you know, crime scenes or whatever. Yeah. We were like getting a DVR years ago <laughs> that was like littered with this show. It's like, I don't know what this is. The first 48. The first 48. Yeah. yeah. It's like, in my initial thought, what was this? Tales about the States? It's like, oh, it's murder shows. No. Mm-hmm. Don't care. Yeah, but it's actually reality. And it's like the first 48 hours of a crime. Like, I sh- I did used to watch it. Tom Segura has a great bit about the first 48. <laughs> we'll watch it. We'll watch it later before we go to the Mexican joint. But it's fucking fantastic. Um, but that's that's quite a bit of fucking albums. <laughs> 40 million albums worldwide. Like, that. there's no denying the talent there. And even more so, having the same lineup since 1974. Yeah. But you know what the longest running before Tom Petty died, the Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers were the longest running band with the the same lineup in the history of rock and roll. Which is boss. Mm-hmm. We could spend the rest of this time talking about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and how they fucked up again. Which is interesting that the other half of that tour that you've already alluded to got in and he was very surprised and had been very standoffish about it. It's like, all right, Trent's going to be allow himself a moment to be happy about this and then get back to work. Mm-hmm. Which is funny because also at the same time, he got a country Grammy yeah. because Old Town Road sampled Nine Inch Nails. Country Grammy, my favorite Nelly song. <laughs> I am not looking forward to getting stuck on your road on a, in a Range Rover. Well, do you remember my Facebook post about Old Town Road? You don't remember that? There's a lot of flack on face space, sorry. I mean, that's, that's true. But I, I'm, I need to read it, like, I need to just read it to you because I can't remember it exactly. You need to do the, some inflection on a thing. You can't even remember the thing I don't remember. How dare you? Something like that. Okay. We did go to the hockey game a couple of days ago and almost got into a fight with two people on the way. You weren't on the ice. You're doing it wrong. Um, well, the Range Rover tried to butt his way in, and then he kept inching forward, and I kept inching forward. And then finally, like, I just bowed to them and, like, rolled my window down. I was like, almighty, sir, please go in your fancy SUV. Please go ahead, sir. Please go ahead. Don't beat me, sir. And <laughs> so here we go, Steve. Steve, I f- this was December 12th last year. I said, I finally heard the song Old Town Road. Let me tell you how I feel about it. My favorite dish from Taco Bell was the toasted cheddar chalupa bucks. Limited time only. I loved it. One night, I decided I loved it so much I'd get two of them. One for now, one for later. Well, I ended up eating both meals in one sitting. Felt horrible. When I went to the bathroom later, I thought that was the biggest pile of shit I'd ever seen. Until I heard that song. (laughs) That's how You can see a song? (laughs) I'm good like that. (laughs) I'm a pro. So, Steve, that's Rush. I I think synesthesia is bullshit, but whatever. So... That's all Rush, and I do like Rush. I'm not a super fan, and you're a bigger fan than I am. Steve, it's, Toby's an even I'm bigger medi- fan. I'm medium. Yeah, you're you're small size. I'm medium size. He's super size. I'm the singles. You're uh, singles and obscure, and he's the the entire catalog. But he likes complex shit anyway. So, um, I mean, he's got like ELO albums and shit like that too, and. I just can't get into that. But much he shit going doesn't on. even have an evil woman. Yeah, she's actually quite nice. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> uh, but that's that's incredible. So we've done we've done the car we've done the bars uh, part of this, and we've we've done the guitars part of this. Steve, is it time to finish up with the cars part of this? Oh boy, I 
no, sometimes you don't miss the end of the 90s because this is going to make you still not. Mm, that's true. <laughs> oh, wait, so we have... Ro- it. Bunnies good. Rocket's better. Rocket bunnies, not so much. Fucking horrible. Horrible, 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 horrible. I would rather ingest that man, Volkswagen Beetle man, man, and not orally. <laughs> man, sorry, not sorry. So we wanted yeah, to Yeah, uh those not watching on the Nada video, uh this is a six inch long scale model Volkswagen Beetle that I've not violated to make it look like Herbie yet. Yep. Yeah, we need this for the Nice. Make it make it look like Herbie and then I'll make a license plate for it that says Hancock. <laughs> So what we need to do... What just fell off of this thing? I don't know. It's yours. I don't know. Is that the spare tire? No, no. it was like a, this little plastic piece. Oh, I haven't touched that. Like I... Whatever. It's not pertinent to the... Uh... It's not nil pertinent. You threw the engine away. Wait, that was the front. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a new Beetle. Nice golf. New Beetle came out, what, 1998? 90... 98. And uh, it was sold well. Right, it was around for one of the other Awesome Power sequels. That's right. It was. It was. I think it was a Spy Who Shagged Me. And uh, now that would have been the first movie in '97. Uh, you know, International plausible. Man of Mystery. Oh goodness! Yeah, Spy Who Shagged Me was 2002. Yeah, I was like, oh good, you've got. The movie you have the character name and then the movie title. It's like just give them numbers. Uh eh, something about James Bond twenty five. It's gonna be a f- dumpster fire, but I'll watch it anyway. Whatever. Is this Daniel Craig doing it? Yeah. So this is his last uh, one. I thought the last one was his last one. So did everybody. Even he thought it was his last but one. But didn't they say Idris Elba was gonna be the next one? Or they, that's that would be that's great. as likely as Danny Glover or no. <laughs> Danny Glover, uh, awesome. Donald Glover being the new Spider Man. Um, well, I don't know. I don't need to see another Spider Man though. I don't uh, need to see another James Bond, and I've only seen two of them. I feel like it's the same you, fucking you, movie. Sorry, Sean. Sorry, Mark. You've, but you've had yeah, well, you've you've had the better experiences of them too. I, I have. It's like it, it's. <laughs> Why did you see the bad ones? I don't want to see the bad <laughs> ones. Don't ruin it for me. I actually enjoyed it. Because <laughs> I, no, I, I started I'm out a, with Goldeneye. Uh, I, I'm a fan despite having started with The Man with the Golden Gun. Which was Dalton? No, that was Moore's second one. Oh, Dalton's uh, was... It is James Bond goes to Fantasy Island. Fuck. With <laughs> the main dude from Fantasy Island. No. It's... Bonkers and a half. What year was that? Seventy four. Um, lawless wasteland. With funny, you should mention that because the uh, the sheriff character mm-hmm. is a complete piece of shit, and he uh-huh. was brought over from the previous movie, uh, Live and Let Die. Was his last name Arpaio? No, sure. He's J- a piece of shit. J W Pepper. <laughs> I started. No, it was like, well, it's like just you know, casual seventies racism. Like, what the hell's a pointy head anyway? <laughs> <laughs> or the what was it? The first? No, it wasn't. Bond, what, where they did the Asian people and they just taped their eyes uh, back. That that was been, James Bond. Yeah, that would have been. Spy who loved me. Uh, you only live twice when Connery goes to Japan and he's. <laughs> Ostensibly killed and comes back as a Japanese man. Never mind him at six foot whatever. Yeah. Really would stand out at the time. True. Yeah. That they was, did, They don't all age well. That was the problem with, with Bond. That's why they didn't want to cast a black man because there are black folks in the UK. But there's not that many. And if you're supposed to be an incognito spy and you're a black dude... In the UK. Oh, usually a lot of these are taking place outside the UK and could rent it out the Royals, but that's a completely different thing. True. And I, well, I see, I started out with Goldeneye and then I saw Casino Royale and that's the only ones I've seen. And Ava Green's in that and I like Ava yep. Green quite a bit. Uh-huh. Yep. I 
had no idea what I was getting into watching Miss Peregrine's school for stilted children or whatever, but uh, she's in that too. Was that worth seeing because of her? That too. It, it's yeah. it's pretty entertaining mm-hmm. that only like one kid in the crew is able to watch, like see these horrible monsters that are trying to kill them. Yeah, that's true. so he's got to be at the helm of like warning everybody about them. Fair. It's got Samuel Jackson was one of the bad guys. Oh, and they morph into these nightmare creatures. Okay, it it didn't suck. Well, it's um, I think I might just watch the other uh, Sin City because then I just get to see her tits again. Okay, that's yeah, fair enough. Because like Ron White said, if you've seen one woman naked, you want to see them all naked. <laughs> I love that guy. So, Steve, about uh, about car trends. So, you and I and Mac, Mr. Mac Kramer, who was on episode number whatever we had a couple mm-hmm. episodes ago, we were having discussions about uh, body kits and 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 mods to the outside, basically not performance modifications per se, but but body modifications. And I'm not talking about tattoos and piercings. So, Steve, I'm not a huge, I'm not a fan at all. Of basically any body kit. What about you? No. They've done so much to ruin perfectly acceptable Econo boxes for so long. So, so many innocent Mitsubishi Eclipses in particular, Ugh. Integras, Civics, even. S two thousands. Oh my god, it's getting just bad. getting barfy. It's getting bad. It's, it's getting just... stanced. It's get. They're getting stanced. You don't. You can stance your Scion XB all you fucking want. It's going to be stupid. Blah blah blah. But that car wasn't built for. Don't stand. An S two thousand was built to be a very fun car on back roads and tracks on twisty bits. It wasn't built to do. What you're fucking doing it. Like, it just doesn't make any fucking sense. Was anything? No. (laughs) Stancing his car is fucking stupid. No, it's like, well, my suggestion the other night was, all right, yes, this is a trusty. However, use motorcycle tires instead. Yeah. That way you can get more use out of your tires doing this dumb thing. Yes. And, oh, I want to fit bigger wheels on there. That's why I'm doing it. Buy a different fucking car. Uh-huh. Like, or uh, do what do whatever you got to do, but don't tilt the wheel. Like, you're, you're, it's, it's not safe. No. It's not safe to do. Your contact, I don't need to explain physics to people, but now I'm going to. You, you just decreased your contact patch by less than, like, you have, like, You've decimated 15% it. contact patch. Only you're supposed to have 100. So, you, everybody that looks like you who likes stance can fucking die, and I wouldn't care. Yeah, <laughs> these are the same people that like Crazy Town. <laughs> I imagine like, they, they could name one more song than Butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> That's three more songs that they should have ever put out. <laughs> Come and dance with me. That was fucking horrible. There, there are worse songs, but I there, are, there are lots more better ones too. Yeah, it's true too, but I. I Anybody might like even even aftermarket wheels. I'm not really a big fan of. That's why I have mine powder coated on the S2K because I like the way they looked on it, and I couldn't. Well, find that does the factory wheels that you had. Those are the factory okay. AP2 wheels, the AP2 version one wheels, because there's an AP2 version two wheel and an AP2 version three wheel, because they did three different OEM wheels for the AP2s and just one for the AP ones. Okay. Then the <laughs> first gen just had the five spoke. Five spoke, sixteen inch wheels. Okay. And then the rest of them were seventeens. Ironically I enough, mean, that said, I've swapped wheels in my car twice, and they were both off Scion TCs. The eighteen inch seven spokes still currently sitting behind my house. If anyone's interested, <laughs> they aluminum. Uh, aluminium. I haven't tested them to see if they rust. I mean, seeing as they're not steel wheels, so I'd imagine as such. I was gonna say if they're not if they're outside, they're yeah, probably they're not rusting. Well, Oxidizing maybe. Well, but let's face it. Any, any wheel is outside. 
That's fair. But <laughs> not moving yeah. does the bad stuff to it. Yeah, no, been, man. Sitting, they've been sitting out there for a year now. I was like, yeah, they're fine. No, I'll I love the car so much. I, I jack the car up every night and take the wheels off and bring them inside. <laughs> Doesn't everybody? <laughs> nope. Dismount the tires. <laughs> <laughs> I'm psychotic with my not driving my car, but I don't take it to that level. Yeah, that'd be uh, a bit crazy. Uh, and then decided the 18s really suck on Charlotte's Crater Road, so put a different set of 17-inch wheels on a Scion TC and uh, discovered I really like those. And now I finally have you know, bigger tires on it. Mm-hmm. And with the slightly damaged driver front quarter from when I got the car, it will rub on a speed bump with that. <laughs> nice. Like, eh. It's like, under normal circumstances, this doesn't rub, but if it's like I'm steering and taking a bump at the same time, like, mm-hmm. it'll go, like, Yep. Eh. At 267,000 miles, I really don't care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and apparently, uh, <laughs> Toyota has a recall to newer cars now that's electrical instead of the Takata airbag. Okay. So uh, now... Um, what the BMW? <laughs> <laughs> they were working with them on the Supra, and now they've inherited the electrical problems. Uh, electrical problems out of something that you really don't want going wrong. That is the airbag system that's not a Takata issue, but an electrical issue. So they have to put a noise filter on the airbag. Or at least the activation system. Oh. What the hell? And this affects three million cars newer than mine. Whoa. So. Oh, good. New shit to look forward to a new car. <laughs> Maybe it'll be fixed by then. Maybe. And it's... Was it on Duh. the new Corolla that you were looking at, too? Really? Man. What sweet irony that is. <laughs> but, I mean, still Toyotas. They just have to go get a Mazda instead. Oh, darn. They do make really good cars now. Uh-huh. Except that new Mazda 3 wagon. I just don't like the way the back end looks. The, uh, sorry, Jason. He's, he got, buy one of the, no, he's the, got one now. The new hatchback. Yeah, the, the one, the weird ha- haunches. And the, it, it's, I don't like it, it. It's got quite the blind spot in the back end. I don't like it. Yeah, he's it's... Uh, Black or really dark gray with a pimp red interior. Interesting. Uh, automatic because he doesn't know any better with a pimp tastic red interior. That's fantastic. <laughs> and oil drive mm-hmm. and discovered it gets worse mileage than the TSX did. Oh, of course it does. Because it's all, all city dri- driving that he's doing. And too. it's all wheel drive. So it's, you know, four different wheels turning the car instead of just two. It's called parasitic drag. This is a nerdy episode, <laughs> <laughs> Duh. but I don't like body. I don't like body kit. Like I want yeah, the car. So, to oh look, yeah, back where we were. Uh, I yeah. wanted to look how it came from the. Yeah, does the, the car factory. look okay? Like if the car doesn't look good as you got it, then get in our car. Very fair, because you. I mean, some some cars Unless, they just, like it's a no, a kid car. Shelby we GTing a Mustang? Like that turned out pretty good. Or Those are Callow- or Callaway on a vet. Yeah, those are that, different because it's an in, it's kind of an in house like, but like buying those aftermarket like C West and the 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 big like Honda <laughs> Honda ones, they're just fucking gaudy. It's just there's nothing. If you're gonna have a turbo and, and hatch I'll, Civic that's that's fast as fuck, make it real clean, nice set of wheels, drop it a couple inches, not slam, not stance, just nice clean, and just surprise the shit out of people on the. That's so much more satisfying than some bonkers fucking Fast and Furious fucking ruined uh-huh. tuner scene. It ruined it. it because amps or ruin. a lot of it would be you know people putting kits on their cars and don't paint them. That's even that no. Yeah, you have this you know atomic green car, but here's this gray plastic front bumper atrocity on it that now it looks like the creature from Predator. Funny story about that. Um, one of the guys I used to work with at the first store in Norwood had a rather pretty uh, red Integra LS, um, and it it was it was low. wasn't stan- at, at the time stance wasn't a thing because people weren't decided they weren't retards anymore. 
but it was Yet. a very pretty red color and like intake exhaust sounded pretty good too not too loud he traded it for an accord coupe uh 93 like i had uh the brown like that brownish color i had puts a body kit on it that's like this unpainted beige green <laughs> and <laughs> it's just whatever spare plastic color this was yeah. yes but not not even prosthetic beige no worse and the gangrene prosthetic beige probably tasted better too <laughs> And it, so he would, turn, he would turn into, and there was a slight uh, dip into the store, and every time he would turn in, it, <laughs> back, the back corner, because the body kit was so long, it would clip. So, so like the first... Eventually like, get ripped off. He finally quit, but he drove that car for like a year, and there was just like this ingrained greenish line on of the speed shit bumper. on the speed... <laughs> Speed bump or like, like wherever the altitude change. Yeah. Like Kevin's been here. <laughs> Kevin's been here a lot. <laughs> that was when I had the white conquest though. And then they didn't. Of course, the, a couple other guys that worked there had Hondas too and everything. And they, and they used to, you know, your car is old. It's not fat. And then we'll take them down the road. And like, Oh, never mind. <laughs> never, never mind. It was like, yeah, you're saying, yeah, you were saying <laughs> that thing, that thing was fun until, you know, parts. Yeah. Says the guy who's looking at skylines. But. <laughs> but at least with being a newer car. I toy with getting a right-hand drive Starion imported. Only because it had the better engine. Those had the 4G63 in it. Okay. The 2 liter that came in the Eclipse later. Okay. And we all know parts for that one. Are plentiful. Plentiful. Was that the same engine that wound up in the SRT Neon? No. Okay. That's 2.4. Um, but that engine is the same engine, after watching Demuro's video from two weeks ago, in the PT Cruiser GT. And... Turbo car rad engine. And it has a stick. I didn't realize it was a stick. Uh, you could get the turbo or the NAs in those yep. with sticks. It was a stick. That's And I thought it was really funny that my dad liked the look of the PT Cruiser when it first came out. And then it took no time for the horror stories to begin, so uh, he shut right up about that thing. Well, my dad was looking at S2000s in 2000, but my mom can't drive a stick. And so he didn't get it, because it couldn't get an automatic. And so he got the Eclipse. Which, at the time, by the way... Was it the third gen? Yes. With the V6? Mm Mm-hmm. So at the time, like... We got a lot of looks, and I would drive it to school every now and then. He'd take the Conquest sometimes. That was a wild-looking car. It was, and you know what? It made a good noise. It mm-hmm. wasn't that fast, but it did make uh, a good noise. Back, I'm bowing at the Greensboro Airport in 2000. Somebody had one of those with a stick, and I may or may not have taken that for a lap around the airport. Yeah. It it would move out of its own way. It, it was For what it was, it was, it was they tried to make it a grown-up sport compact yeah. which isn't really a thing <laughs> so either but go to go from the bonkers ass first two generations to this it was an evolution that <laughs> yeah <laughs> wrong mitsu model um that they, they weren't asking for it like it kept going for another decade and mm-hmm. then it's just getting further from what it was yeah, the last generation eclipses were horrible looking. yeah you don't see none of them no, no, do you don't like my dad's has one hundred and twenty five thousand miles. It's a two thousand. It's twenty years old now, and peop, he he said people ask him to buy it because they just don't see anymore. Yeah, and, but he he did, he and a well kept car. If like, or if you were to, what would he drive? What would he His get? Dodge, he has a uh, ninety eight uh, uh, Dodge Ram three eighteen, which in turn people would still batter him about that too. Probably, because it, it has the same radio in it as my Jeep does, because it's all the same fucking thing. People in your old stereos. <laughs> get, I, a, get a piece of shit touchscreen like an adult. I, I just, they, don't, they don't make a one and a half. Mine's a 1.5 den size, and they don't make a touchscreen when a 1.5 den. So you either have to do a lot of cutting for a two, or uh-huh. get a single den, and they look awful. Yeah, or you, and then you get the... Uh, kid that has like the cubby hole 
above or below it. I don't like the cup. Yeah, mm. that's... I don't like it. Because you can't really hold anything in it. It's like, all right, here's yeah. this... Uh, it came with a remote. I could put the remote in here. All right. You launch once. All right. Now the remote's in the back seat. Yep. All 210 pound feet of torque. <laughs> <laughs> or a firm braking. That too. It's, yeah. Just well, that would not go good. F- forward. It'll bounce. <laughs> Are you out of booze? No. Can's not, good. Oh, you have a. Oh, yeah. Tall, tall boy. boy can. Yeah. I'll, I'll wait for you. I got. This this is chocolate milk, so that's why it went down so easily. I'll just have some more whiskey. Okay. I mean, oh no, I'll have to have some more <laughs> cheap, good Canadian whiskey. But I'm just I, I like I like the idea of having a car that's not ostentatious to like. I mean, I know the Vipers are like stuff like, but they, it it was made like that. But I like pulling up somewhere and just looking very stock. Even a nice set of wheels. Okay, I'll meet you halfway because the stock Viper wheels, the three spokes, Mark loves them. I fucking can't stand them. Um, I don't like those wheels at all. I but think like, only Saab made a three spoke I didn't hate. Those weren't bad, actually. That one, the 900s. Mm-hmm. I miss Saab. It was quirky. Mm-hmm. We need to do a Saab episode. It could be our Saab story. Um, I saw the last generation nine to five a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, "What? That's and now it's been ten years. That's still a stunning car. It nothing looks like that. Like I don't like it, but nothing looks like that. By the way, the the one before that, the nine fives before mm-hmm. that, I really like the way those look. Like I would still entertain. Because it thought. still looks like a nine thousand. God, it still does. <laughs> Uh, apparently Kalen's dad had a 9,000 back in the day. He had like nice. that in a five series. Like, wait, you had these cool cars and now you have a Murano. What the hell, Matt? Um, uh, Clarkson reviewed a nine five back in the mid two thousands when they first came out. And in the mid two thousands, this is bonkers. That car would do 40 to 80 faster than a nine eleven turbo. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> oh my God. That's insane. Uh huh. And that's really like, to me, top speed doesn't mean f- fuck all. Like I will, like give me a car that will go from zero to a hundred miles per hour mm-hmm. as fast as fucking possible. I after that, I don't care. I'm not driving like or going like. Give me a top speed of at least like a buck fifty, like so I can go to a drag strip without you know pegging the speedometer and the you know RPMs. But I mean. Uh, your vehicle's earlier than the 80s, so you don't have an 85 mile an hour speedo, so I think you're okay. Well, the Conquest had a 150 mile per hour speedometer. Yours, yours too? <laughs> That's what I have now. Like, Well, uh, mine was built in 87. It, so. mine, mine's allegedly seen two thirds of that. I had the Conquest up to, this is, the statute of limitations isn't gone, by the way. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There was one time that someone's tailing me getting on 77. It's like I took the on ramp really slow, and as soon as I hit the interstate, mm. gunned it. <laughs> like that's probably my, I can't even say daily triple, like annual of triple. Right. I had the Conquest to 125. And I, it would I got do that. the white VR6 GTI to 130. Uh, that's the fastest I've ever been. I've had the S two K up to one twenty, but um, that was funny. The um, when I had the Starion, I had it up to one twenty five, and we went. I was on the way home from somewhere, and uh, went to Josh's house, and he's like, "Man, when you passed me, all I heard was." <laughs> we popped the hood, and my like entire turbo was glowing red. Nice. <laughs> that was when I was running the stock turbo, which would run about. 16 psi before it decided that was enough it was just hot air after that <laughs> that thing would pull like I, I miss some of those old 80s turbo cars because it would just the there was lag. no tur- it wasn't lag per se but it would go instead of like all right so it, i ran 20 pounds of boost on the garrett turbo i had when i sold it so it would go 5 7 12 20 that was what Goodness. it would do. So it, was just, it would just take off. So it didn't. I mean, you would get about seven. You get a good torque. Like it had, 
when we dynoted, it was 250 horsepower at the wheels and 320 pound feet of torque. Um, and I had it, didn't have it gutted, but like it had a full interior, but no AC, no heat, no, no anything. So it was just go kart. So it was, I think we weighed it, it was like 2890 at the track. So 320 pound feet of torque at the wheels in that thing was fun, 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 fun. And there was no sound deadening, so all you heard was turbo noise and exhaust yeah. noise, too. So. But that, that, that car had character. And I raced a Lotus Esprit twin turbo V8, and he fucking raped me down the interstate. <laughs> he gave me a thumbs up, though. So if you're going to get I'll, raped, I'll... giving the thumbs up. I... <laughs> we, we had our fun. And this is going to be fun until the Esprit breaks. <laughs> That's true. I'll, I'll call you a wrecker. <laughs> the Esprit has the old Jag. Uh, is it, you have to have two of them. Yeah. You drive one, one in the shop. Yep. I still like the... the um, I'm bad on my nomenclature with Jags, but XJ12. The, 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 yeah, the sedan 12-cylinder. I like that one. The XKR is the one I was thinking about. Okay. Um, but I like the coupe, the the twelve cylinder coupe though. Okay, is it XJ? Tw- X X XK sounds XK closer, tw- right? Okay, I, I like those with the the um oval headlights in the front, like late eighties, or the qua- the the quads or the quad like the, the quads were quads. The, the, oh, they had they had the uh, the XJS. Is that what you're thinking of? Yeah. And then later ones of those had the cascaded headlights. XJS V12. Okay, yeah, which was through the mid '90s. That I think my last girlfriend in Greensboro, her granddad had one, and never had the opportunity to drive that. That one. Yeah, that's. I like that. Twelve nine on um on eBay. Oi, oh, it's automatic. Fuck. 72,000 miles, though. Owned by a picky collector since 1988. Same owner since then. Stored in a climate-controlled garage. 12.9? Actually, that wouldn't be a bad purchase. I mean, it's not reliable. If you need to have a car you never drive, that's kind of perfect. Yeah. Oh, there's the convertible version, though, for 7,100. Oh. That's boss. See, that's the kind of convertible I would want. Like one, not a performance convertible, like a yeah. cruising convertible. That's the kind of convertible I would want. Like, I want a performance car to be a hard top. I had, while valeting, I think someone had an 89 Benz SL. Mm-hmm. Beige, gross. Uh, mint condition. But like, yeah, low miles on it. Mm-hmm. That was perfect, but... It's funny how disproportionate that car is. Like the diving board bumpers and the comparatively giant wheels in this tiny car. Like it, this is just totally not my thing to have the Barrel Hills cop car <laughs> that you've seen the DVD cover. And it's mm-hmm. like, all right, here's Eddie Murphy chilling in front of this Benz. Like front looks cool, but it's just a short, awful thing. I've never seen Beverly Hills cop. Watch the first one, watch the second one, skip the third. There may or may not be a fourth one. Really, it's the first. The first one's incredible. The second one gets really dark. So the over or under for watching movies and their sequels is 1.5, and you should pretty much always take the under. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, much like... uh Back to the Futures, you can give about half to either of the sequels. Okay. Watch the first. With the Bond films, they're still batting about 500. Okay. In baseball, hey. And that's passing figures at that point. Hey, in baseball, batting 300 is an all-star. And I'm not in the Star Wars, so I figure uh, the, the series is batting a 25. They're weird. Like it, it's it's not my cup of tea though. I, was like, I just don't care. Mm. <laughs> I I like science, but I don't like science fiction. I, I like learning about planets and just watch space every, balls instead. 
yeah, well, I know that's that's trying to be goofy, and I can appreciate that. So that's why I like Spaceballs. But I don't know. I I, I like. I'm just not a big sci-fi. That's I I can't get into Star Trek, Star Wars, Star Search, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Nope, nope, nope. Um, Doctor ju- Who. Just watch The Fifth Element instead. I like The Fifth Element because it's batshit fucking crazy. Yes. Doctor Who, to me, is just boring. Yep. Star Trek is boring. I like the movies, the new ones. Emily said I would enjoy the new ones for the action only, but I'll be honest, I'm not a big action movie guy. Because my logical part of my brain goes, that's not possible. That's not possible. And then that's all I think about. And I can't turn that part of my brain off. The first movie Emily and I saw as a couple was Jackass in 3D. So when I want to turn my brain off, I want to turn it off all the fucking way. <laughs> we got time for one more? You want to so take us to the Mexican more, place? Uh, let's just take the Mexican joint. You sure? Sure. Sweet. Well, uh, this was an interesting episode. By the way, I told one of my coworkers about the podcast today. She, she only works like two days a week. And she's like, if we were talking about podcasts, must like, be nice. I was like, I do a podcast. She's like, really? I was like, yeah. She's like, well, give me the, you know, sh- show me where to get it. And so I showed her iTunes, Spotify, and and the, here the are your GPS coordinates to get it. And she uh, she walked away, and like an hour later, she goes, I need to talk to you. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> she goes, you didn't tell me every episode was like two fucking hours long. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't ask. <laughs> What what do you want? Brain stuff when it's seven minutes a pop and it's half ads. Uh, by the, I did watch the TED talk with the hide the pain Harold guy, the the old guy meme that where he's uh, kinda, oh that oh he has the, a TED uh, talk and it's so great. He's oh, Hungarian. Oh crap shit! He's Hungarian. It's so fucking funny. <laughs> he's actually like a really smart guy too. <laughs> Steve for fifty one. We we got to do an episode on location. We just haven't had a chance. Your schedule's been extra bonkers lately yeah and it's getting no better until further notice all right so let's see if we do another one in two weeks that'll be in between my vegas trip so yeah that'll be fine uh, because if we do the next one on the first week of february um then i'll go to vegas the next week for my birthday Mm -hmm. and then we'll do one after that so maybe maybe the one before i don't know we got to try out your laptop we got to try out your laptop so well, Steve, let's go eat some Mexican yeah, I food. I drain my laptop, too. It's, like, it's not dead yet. It's what are you doing in the game? this weekend? Uh, let's see if I can meet up with What's Your Face to buy the Roku. I couldn't buy the day because we couldn't quite touch space. Like, do you not have a smartphone? You have my phone number. It's, There's no excuse. And apparently the Publix in Indian land is way further from here than I expected. Uh, Indian land? Yeah, that's... 44 minutes? Yeah. And making a lot of wrong turns along the way because I wasn't expecting a double uh, traffic circle along the way. Like, what the yuckety fuck? And then she writes me back as I'm driving home, like, I waited there half an hour and didn't see you. You had my phone number in the first post. Yeah. What the hell? Holy. Well, I try that later, or let's go to eBay. Well, she's old. She'll be dead soon. And this is not an old person. Sounded like <laughs> Just it. Dumb person though. Old. Oh well. In uh, nominal. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Well, Steve, fifty-one's done on fifty-one. So, uh, so we'll see you again in a week and a half or so. All right, so. then we have to do it on location. What's the sale on Highway fifty-two? Go on. I'm AJ. And I'm still Steve. Later. Bye. Doodles, three doodles, fifty-one doodles.